Hi, in this video I want to review something pretty cool I read about in Augie World in an article by Marcelo Gambaluri, and it's about um, creating rotational parameters but not in a typical family, doing it in, a, in an adaptive component and uh, conceptual mass environment. It's pretty cool and it's pretty stable because as you know if you've done rotational parameters sometimes those reference lines can hit the, uh, the zero and your rotational parameter will sort of lock up and collapse. So here I'm in a conceptual mass environment and I'm going to um, set the, gr uh, the ground plane as my working plane and draw a rather large circle. So what I'll do, and I'll, and I'll actually make, turn that circle into a reference line. I'm going to keep all my lines reference lines. So I'll put a reference plate, plate, uh, point on the circle. And what you'll always notice is that when you highlight a hosted element, uh, you'll get the ability in the um, properties dialog box to talk about where that thing is on its host, if you'd like to parameterize that. So I'm going to parameterize an angle. And I'll call that angle. Well, right now I'll just plug in 45 degrees. And you see it goes 45 degrees east of north, according to our view cube. Um, so I can call that, actually parameterize that and call it uh, P1 angle. Hit OK. Hit OK. So now that's being driven. And always remember to flex your family types to make sure they're working properly. That's being driven from here. Oh, actually, I just changed that to 35 and it swung down. So it actually looks like it's swinging uh, north of east, which is which is interesting. I don't know what the logic is there. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that point, and um, you'll notice that it just is displaying its plane normal to its direction of travel on its host. I'm going to come back over to the properties dialog box, uncheck show normal reference plane only, and when I apply that, we're going to see our other planes. So I'll set, I'm going to come down here and tab through, and I'm going to set the, um, the working plane to one that's parallel to my ground plane, lay down a point, move that point right over on top of this point, doesn't seem like it's actually wanting to snap. I don't know why. Maybe if I align it, it'll do that for me. And it gives me a warning down at the bottom that there are identical points on the same point. So I'm going to just select my new point and actually create, uh, well, I'll just offset it by 50 feet to push it up in the air. And then once I've done that, I can do a spline through point and make another reference line. And that second point is now riding with the first point. So if I toggle that back to 45, those two guys are going to ride together. Now here's where it kind of gets interesting. I can now grab this point, and this point can now be, if I turn on its planes, this point can now be a new host. So what I'll do is I will. actually set the plane that's sort of plumb to the ground and create another circle. And I'll make that circle a reference line and host the point on it, which I can also give a rotational parameter. So I come down here and change this to angle, change this to 45 and apply or just plug in a parameter. I'll call that E2 angle and hit OK and hit OK. Now if I want to do the same thing and make an armature I can do spline through points, change that to a reference line. So now I've got something kind of interesting going on here. If I pull these guys up and start to manipulate them P1, I'll change to 50. You see the entire armature swings around, and P2, if I change to 35, that armature swings around. So now let's do that again. I'm going to come in you 
notice I don't have to display the um, points in order to tap through them. Just sometimes they're a little bit difficult to see, so you want to hit the show command and see which, that's actually not the one I wanted to do. So I'll try again. Yeah, there we go. So now I'll make another circle here. Change this guy into a reference line, host a point on it. See spline through points. So I'm doing this slightly um, out of the order. If I did it before, but I can still come back into this guy and parametize it. And I'll call it P3 angle. Now these guys should, again, all ride together. If I go back to number one and change it to 45 again, they're all riding in a plane. I'll get more dramatic this time in the shift. 90, 0. So these guys are all riding in the same plane. Now so here's something kind of cool that I didn't realize I could do. Um, I kind of didn't spot it until now. But I can grab one of these points and actually just rotate it. And if I just plug in a number, 90 degrees, and hit return, I've now got a point which you can't really tell by looking at it, but it's now rotated 90 degrees. And I didn't realize that, it's, that, that that's actually something you can parametize here in the, um, in the properties dialog box. There's a rotational angle parameter. If I reset that to zero, it'll click into plane. So, you know, what are the practical... Um, applications of this. I'm not sure I can answer that question, but let me um, let me open a, a more developed version of this file. So what I did is I kind of uh, I linked a bunch of these together in a similar manner and then I came in with a, um, an adaptive component family that was just two points and I, I locked them from point to point along those reference lines that I was showing before. And so I can kind of um, toggle this thing uh, live instead of pulling up the, di uh, the dialog box. I actually programmed them into um, some planes off to the side so they'd all, I could use these things effectively as pi hydraulic pistons and actuate the geometry. So there's a lot going on here. What's actually happening is I've, uh, and I'll show you how I did this really quickly. I just drew a line in space, grab that line, and I said create form. Now I've got just a simple plane. And when I grab that plane, I can uh, lock its profiles. And once I do, I've got uh, offsets that I can parametize. In this case, I would parametize this guy. And you see there's a number of them already done. So each one of these guys, if I grab them, you're going to see there's already, and in this case, it's a positive offset. But all these guys were pistons that I were using to drive this whole mechanism. But I tied them all into this one driver so I can kind of make the thing spin around and actuate all at once. So again, I'm not sure what the practical applications are, but it's extremely stable. And uh, you know, even in this case, I drew a line across the breadth of the circle and made an inverse parameter on the other so I, I could get this guy rotating. I'm not sure where I controlled this from. Let's see if I go back. Um, yeah, you know, there's so much going on here, I don't even remember where it is. But you get the idea. It's a pretty cool way to have um, relatively complex hosted relationships amongst parameters that are angular and um, point based and ride along one another in a very stable way without seeming to want to break. And what I'd be interested in knowing is how one could um, have something within the project environment where you do something like a piston and actuate this. I haven't tried that yet, but uh, it might be possible.
So that's that, and I hope you found this informative.